So the local elections were over 10 days ago now, and I think it's given us all a bit of time to digest it and think about where parties went right and where they went wrong and <clears throat> why the results were the way they were. And I know everyone's got an opinion, which is fantastic. Um, but I just saw a poll, which I think is very interesting. I think it can kind of link back to why the results were the way they were for the local elections. Um, so this graphic that we'll put up here is from um, Stats for Lefties, which is a great Twitter account that does all kinds of different polling statistics um, and seat estimates as well. Um, so let's have a look at the voting intention. So voting intention, we've got 43% for the Conservatives, 30% for Labour. So that's actually lower than what Labour got in 2019. 11% um, for the Liberal Democrats, 9% uh, for the Greens. This is the kicker. This is the real big one. 9% for the Green Party. That is astronomically good for the Greens. You know, when we're, especially when, when we're uh, operating within a first-past-the-post electoral system for a, a Green Party like that, not one of the two main political parties to be at 9%. That, that would be a fantastic result for them, much, much higher than anything they've got before in a previous general election. And then 2% for Reform UK. Now, that is very interesting in of itself. But then, when we look at the seats, I think it gets even more interesting. So, the Conservatives will get an absolutely enormous majority, 386 seats. Um, and that would obviously give them, a, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a landslide. Labour would have 172, which is truly dreadful. Um, certainly a lot worse than what, what they got in, in 2019, a whole lot worse than what they got in 2017, which, you know, was a bright spot um, in an otherwise continuous sort of decline since 2005. But the uh, the Lib Dems don't really benefit all that much from this. They get they only get nine seats. In fact, they seem to lose seats compared to what they won in 2019. The SNP get 58, others 23. Reform UK don't get any, but the Greens do get two, right? So that would be historic for them. And the seat that they would win, I think it's Bristol West. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's Bristol West. Basically, Labour has a huge majority there at the moment, like from the 2019 election results. I think it was, what, 28,000? So for that seat to change hands is really very, very damning for the Labour Party. It really, really is. But the question is, these very strange results um, are all fine and dandy, but what's causing it? You know, why on earth? when, you know, let's be honest, this Conservative government has handled the pandemic very poorly. The only thing that's worked well really has been uh, the track and trace, not the track and trace system, that's been horrendous. The only thing that's worked well has been the vaccination programme and really that's just been handled by the NHS, by the experts, by those kind of people and not the government really. So why, why are the Tories doing so well? Well, in my view, it's pretty simple, right? First thing, yeah, the vaccine rollout, right? That's contributed. The, the government has taken a lot of credit for that. And people generally, I think, uh, attribute at least part of that success to the government. And they're feeling a lot happier and we're, when lockdowns are being eased and, you know, everyone's kind of um, feeling a little bit of elation at the moment. And they're going to attribute that, at least in part, to whichever party is currently <clears throat> in government. But also something else that I think is contributing to this is the fact that the Conservatives are actually offering people policy, right? Now, often what we see in a lot of countries, I think especially in the United States, is the Conservative Party doesn't really offer many policies that will have material benefits for the general population, whereas the left tends to, and the centre often doesn't either, right? But as we saw with the budget this year, and as we've seen even way back in the, in the 2019 election, Boris Johnson and this iteration of the Conservative Party that are currently in government, they're not bound by some mantra to, to keep a balanced budget or any of those things. They're not bound by strict ideology. 
in the same way that they might have been in 2010 or even 2015, right? The same happened in America in 2016. Trump was proposing, all right, a bunch of absolutely ridiculous policies like building a massive border wall. But there were also stuff like insourcing, you know, bringing the jobs back and uh, and stopping jobs, you know, stopping jobs from going to China, things like that. Now, when you have a situation where people who are more or less in the centre, let's be honest, you know, the Labour Party appears to be kind of being mainly governed by the people on the right of the party at the moment. When you have those people not really proposing any policies, then you're going to have an issue. Because all of a sudden the Conservatives are saying, oh yeah, well, we're going to invest all this money into infrastructure and we're going to build all these hospitals and we're going to make the UK a uh, world leader in, in green technology and we're going to do this, that and the other and you know we're going to spend more here and spend more there. People are going to look at that and be like, oh, it's pretty good that. And they've delivered on Brexit and the vaccine rollout was going well. What's, what's Labour talking about? Labour is offering essentially nothing, right? If you look at the 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 big the big fight the big battle over over an NHS worker pay rise or what especially nurses what nurses deserve the nurses I think it was the Royal College of Nurses said they wanted I think it was somewhere between ten and fifteen percent they were kind of hovering around twelve I think a twelve percent pay increase right now I think that's perfectly fair given how they've been absolute heroes absolute warriors throughout the pandemic right. The Conservatives are like, no, 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 you'll, you'll, you'll have one, right, 1%, 1 which is a real-term pay cut since 2010. Labour were like, hang on, what? <laughs> Make that two. Make that 2%. Is that really going to inspire people? <laughs> is that really going to inspire people? That is so far away from what working people actually want. You can't just look at it and be like, well, actually, what we want is marginally better than what the Conservatives want to do. So you should support us. Right? And we, and then not give any other policy. I mean, we've heard tiny little bits and pieces. We've heard stuff about votes at 16. Well, that's going to win the votes of young people who are already more likely to vote Labour. Anyway, I mean, it's a good policy and I support it. And I do think they, the Labour Party should support it. But compare that to stuff the Conservatives are putting out, compare that to the massive investment, compare that to, you know, levelling up the North. Now, all of these promises are shallow. None of them will actually get to the root of the problem. But that doesn't matter, right? It's all about winning votes and strategic investment to make sure that the Conservatives are as electorally successful as they possibly can be. Labour doesn't seem to understand that there's been a massive paradigm shift. The Overton window has totally, has moved a million miles since the late 90s, right? They don't seem to get that. You have people like Peter Mandelson saying that, you know, the people who were in charge of Labour's 2019 annihilation should be, uh, shouldn't be lecturing anyone on, on policy or on strategy or anything like that. But, you know, Peter Mandelson, He's kind of, he, I mean, he's kind of got a whole sordid past of corruption scandals and things, so I don't think he should be anywhere near the Labour Party anyway. But even if we're just talking about strategy, you know, Mandelson hasn't been an effective strategist since 2005, maybe. And even then, Labour's vote share was poor in 2005. It was like 35, 36%, right? Which now, compared to what the Tories are getting, would still mean the Tories would win in a big way. So... He has no answers. Labour appears to have no answers. People don't trust Keir Starmer. And we saw that in the result in Hartlepool. We saw that in the result in the local elections. And the places where Labour managed to do well was where they embraced common sense, bold, transformative policies. Andy Burnham talking about bringing um, buses into public ownership in Manchester. Talking about bread and butter issues. Mark Drakeford talking about similar things, you know. And then where it was more vacuous and lacking in policy terms and integrity in, in, in terms and in terms of principles as well. In Scotland and in England, nothing. Right? Terrible, terrible results. So <clears throat> I just thought this poll was really interesting.
and I thought I'd kind of talk generally about how I feel Labour's strategy is going. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious how horrendously they're handling the situation at the moment. And apparently Keir Starmer, there's rumours that he's going to totally overhaul Labour's policy platform. And I do believe that it needs to be, you know, changed around a bit. Because let's be honest, the uh, the individual policies of 2019 were pretty great, but the, the whole package wasn't very sellable. But he, apparently he's going to totally overturn that whole that whole kind of left-wing, bold, radical kind of side of it. And I think when it comes to these bread and butter issues, you can't be like that. Because the Tories are basically outflanking Labour in that regard. And if, if you're going to go to the, the right of the Tories or not explain your policies, not even explain your principles, how can you ever hope to win an election? You can't. So we'll see if that's that's true about Starmer doing a big policy overhaul. I actually think it probably will be. Um, and I think Peter Mandelson is probably one of the key figures behind that, but who knows? Um, thank you all very much for watching. We'll see what happens with Labour's strategy, but I think at the moment the Conservatives have solidified their place as the party of government for a long time to come, um, perhaps in indefinitely, judging by the horrendous voter ID laws they're going to be implementing soon, which we'll talk about at some point. But I think one thing that is clear as well is that uh, Keir Starmer's position is untenable. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you liked it, you know, then why not translate that into a digital form and click the like button. Or, you know, even better, if you're feeling extra wild, subscribe and click the bell.